hello good people welcome to my youtube channel how to become a ghostwriter i'm really excited about this topic because when i started becoming a ghostwriter i didn't get so many people to tell me how to become a ghostwriter so i had bumps on the way including legal issues story for another day but <laughs> Ghostwriting is really interesting. It can earn you a lot of money, it can get you in trouble, and it can get you some thorough experience and meet you some really interesting people. So today's video, I'd like to tell you a few tips on how to become a ghostwriter. First off, if you do not know, a ghostwriter is somebody who writes on behalf of another person and doesn't claim any rights to the material that they've written. Ghostwriters can be book writers, they can be music writers, they can be poets, um, they can be article writers, they're basically writers who will never claim their work because they have sold the copyrights to that work. So nobody can, um, uh, you can't really say that you worked on something because you sold it and you signed a contract and a disclosure agreement and agreed that the work is not yours after it's done. Now that I've said that, I should say that some time back I did, I was speaking about ghostwriting and I gave two examples of ghostwriters who've been mentioned in the book and I just wanted to correct because I made a mistake. Those were not ghostwriters, those were co-writers. There's a difference of a co-writer and a ghostwriter. I think I should pull down that video because it's misguiding. Um, we'll see, we'll see. But the people who appear in the in the book title together with the author are usually called co-writers. Ghostwriters are not known of because they practically sell the rights to any material that they write under the contract of a ghostwriter. Having said that, for you to become a ghostwriter, obviously you need to be good at your work. And because you cannot give an example, for example, I can't give you a direct reference to work that I did for somebody else because I did sign a contract saying that I do not claim that work in any way. Um, it's very difficult to prove to somebody that you can write. So the first part about becoming a ghostwriter is either publishing your own material or um, having evidence that you can write. And really, uh, the easiest way to do it is publishing either a digital material or a print material, but something that is legit and there's no question as to whether you're the author or not. So if it's music, it has to be very clear that it's you. If it's a book, it has to be very clear that it's you. If it's a poem, um, it has to be very clear that you are the author of that material. So that's the first step of becoming a ghostwriter because there's no way, <laughs> no way on earth you're going to refer somebody who you've done for um, work, unless they want you to, which is usually very rare in all honesty. So make sure that you have material that you can show people and um, be proud of and tell them, you know what, I worked on this. For me, um, I have told you this before, I did write The Budding Tree some years back. Um, I have spoken about The Budding Tree a lot and um, I'm in the process of writing another book. I don't want to talk much about it, but having something that I can show people that this is what I've done. You can read it. Um, you can see it is the kind of writing that you want for your own book and then I can be able to pick from that. Obviously with time you sort of grow with it, but it's important that you have something that you can prove that you've written. The second thing that you need to become a ghostwriter is to sell yourself. So if you've written or published anything, book, music, poetry, or anything that you want to ghostwrite in, then you want to market it and you want to speak about it and you want other people to speak about it and testify to your skill, your writing skill. Now the importance of this is when somebody who wants their material written comes to research about you or to find out about you and see if you're capable of doing their work, they will find evidence, you know? So you market yourself not with the intention of getting clients, but with the intention of getting people to read your material and talk about it, whether they like it, criticize it, or uh, make notes of it, uh, compliment it, recommend it, you know? You want people speaking about your material because that's the only way that other people can know about you and know about your skill and 
gauge your skill really or find interest in gauging your skill so once first of all you've written something um second of all you have started marketing it and getting people speaking about it uh third third, third is you make it accessible so that anybody who wants to read it can reach it for example the burning tree shamelessly plugging myself is available on amazon so it's not only available to people in kenya but people from all over the world can actually um look up amazon without me having to permit them to look at it so you get people you get you make it available so that people can access it so that potential clients can access it without your permission and just check out for themselves what you're about the next thing you need to work on is a contract now i have to tell you something very interesting with a contract it looks like a simple document where you and your client sign but wait until the rubber hits the road and you did not protect yourself enough or you did not protect your client enough. Then you will know the consequences of a contract, which includes the non-disclosure agreement, where you agree that once you've finished working on a material, that you will sell all the rights to the author and you'll never speak about it. I have seen cases on YouTube and you can go check them out for yourself, but there are cases on YouTube where a ghostwriter has come out to call out some work they've done and they've been slapped with legal issues. You know, you've been slapped um, with all the problems <laughs> that the justice system of any country can come at you with. So it's important that you first um, find the integrity to stick by your contract. So if you said it's a non-disclosure agreement, it's a non-disclosure agreement. Whether the song becomes a hit, whether the book becomes a hit, whatever you've written, whether it becomes a hit or not, it's no longer yours. You can't brag about it. You can't um, go around telling people you did the work because obviously, obviously, you entered into a contract, you did it with your whole heart for somebody else, and you have to respect that contract. And having said that, I should also say that it's important that you are an honorable person and, 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 a, and a respectable person. That's how you keep people coming at you, especially as a ghostwriter, because um, you tend to deal with sensitive issues. Sometimes, for example, if you're writing an autobiography, if you're writing a memoir, you might know things about somebody. And well, some of them might make it to the book. Some of them might not make it to the book. Um, if you're an honorable and respectable person, this is not vibe, you go vibing with everybody. You respect yourself, you respect your work and your career, and for that reason, you are very secretive. No, so, no tea is being served, okay? No tea is being served in the ghostwriting business. It's um, an industry where privacy and secrecy is really important. So if you want to enter, if you want to become a ghostwriter, you really have to learn to shut your mouth <laughs> for lack of a better word or keep things to yourself which i think most writers are able to but as a ghostwriter that is a very important skill that um, you need to learn to work on finally i need to tell you about the importance of um, referring to yourself as a ghostwriter um, once you have samples you're confident with the work you've done it's edited it's in good shape um, you need to be confident about saying you're a ghostwriter and you need to be confident about speaking out about your skill as a ghostwriter. So whether you've started, whether you found the first gig or not, it's important that um, you refer to yourself as a ghostwriter with confidence and you speak about it in networking sites. So the most important, and these days I see even and I've spoken about this before, by the way, on Facebook, there are groups where you can speak to people about you being a ghostwriter in writing groups and you're likely to get a gig from there. Um, on LinkedIn, you can reach out to people. I have had incidences where I have personally reached out to someone and said, hey, you know, from what I know about you or what I've read about you online or what I've watched about you on telly, I think you have a story to tell and I'd like to help you tell that story. You know, you sell yourself some sort of proposal, even saying that to somebody. So you need to approach people and tell them what you're doing and encourage them to also trust you with that. And in that process, you will be able to get yourself clients. So those are the tips of becoming a ghostwriter. I really hope you've learned something from this video. I'm sure it's short, but I hope you've learned something from it. Um, 
remember to like and subscribe i know i've said this at the beginning of the video i hope you remember to do all those things and i hope you've learned something if you need to learn more about writer's fantasy please visit the description box we have left all our information there and i really look forward to see what you have to say about this video i look forward to learn if you're a ghostwriter please tell us in the comment section tell us what i have missed out about becoming a ghostwriter and if um you want to become a ghostwriter and you have any questions also put them in the comment section. I would really like for us to continue this conversation and speak about becoming ghostwriters. Until our next video, goodbye.